one second. One second. Yeah, I'm good. Well, Neil, uh, looks like you came out victorious against uh, this, <laughs> you know, undefeated welterweight prospect. So I guess what are the emotions now after, you know, a comeback win like that? Man, it feels great. I mean, not to just go out there and get the job done and get the finish as well. It feels great. I mean, I feel like uh, with where I was at in my career, where things were going uh, last year, open up this year with a statement like that, I feel like that's exactly what it needs to do. And obviously, you face the who's who at the welterweight division, but in your preparation is and the ability to implement your game plan is kind of what you're known for. But like, did that fight play out as you expected? Because obviously, Mike was looked obviously really like the, the, the total package in those first two rounds before you you know pulled it out at the end. Yeah, I mean, we watching film, we definitely expect him to uh, blitz forward a lot more and be a lot more aggressive in his strikes and that kind of thing, uh, forcing the takedowns, looking for uh, submissions. But uh, he definitely played it very smart in the early rounds, being very patient on the outside. Uh, kind of forcing me to uh, find him in the octagon and just kind of um, this, this kind of countering me from the outside, so to speak. So um, that wasn't anticipated at all. Um, but uh, being down two rounds, going to the third, the coach was like, hey, throw Carson to the wind. You should get in there and get it done. So uh, I just went for it. How much of your game plan did you have to alter in there then, uh, given what you were seeing in there that you weren't expecting? Um, a lot. I mean, especially with, the, uh, with him being a, a real good submission guy. I mean, I think he won like – six, seven fights with the guillotine. Uh, so put my neck or head in a compromised position going for a takedown on him was definitely um, something we didn't want to do. But uh, when you're down two rounds, you kind of have to take a chance and go for it. And um, the, the the third round played out how we thought the early rounds were going to go. If I went for a takedown, I thought he would jump for the guillotine right away. Um, and as soon as he did, I was like, all right, I have to um, capitalize his position to kind of advance and not let him sink his uh, um, legs around my waist to finish the choke kind of thing and uh, was able to do just that. Given what you said, like, you know, where you where you were at in your career, the pressure that you put on yourself and to, to get this victory against Mike in Toronto, where does this win rank in terms of your career? Obviously, you fight and f beaten bigger names than Mike, but just at this moment in time, where does this rank? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like, yeah, I beat the who's who of, uh, of MMA thus far, but uh, the sports of MMA is very unforgiving. Uh, it's more so like, what have you done for me lately? So, yeah, sure, I beat the Carlos Kynes, I beat the Johnny Hendricks, I beat the uh, uh, rival lovers of the sport, but um, the, the sport of MMA has a very short memory, and it's more so like, all right, what have you done as of late? So, um, so you have to get a finish on a, of a uh, young, up-and-coming guy in the UFC that was undefeated in the UFC prior to the night. Uh, I feel, feel like it was a, a great statement. I feel like I'm still able to hang with the best of them. Uh, the young guys, the old guys, whomever. So uh, if I went out there and, and did exactly what I needs to do. Those three names you mentioned, those are like they fought what 10, 11 years ago, and you're still fighting <laughs> these guys who probably watched those fights when they were coming up. So do you think you get the the credit that you deserve in the grand landscape of MMA, or is that something you just don't even care about? Um, honestly, I, I, I definitely call myself a time into uh, sooner thing like, I need more recognition, blah, blah, blah. But uh, at the end of the day, when uh, my career is uh, said and done, um, the recognition may come then. But as of now, it's just like, all right, just uh, keep looking forward to the next one. Like tonight was a great win. It was a great victory. Um, I'm not completely satisfied with uh, what I accomplished just yet. Um, still have some more hunger in me, still have some more in the tank to um, go out there and continue to accomplish more. So I'm um, definitely not content with tonight's victory. I know I have a lot more uh, that I'm capable of, a lot more that I'm able to show. Uh, so on Monday, right back to Jordan board to continue moving forward. And I think I know we know the answer to this, but how do you want the rest of your 2024 to look like? And how oh, as busy as possible. I and mean, we were literally walking to this room trying to lay, lay out the fights that are coming out of the welterweight division. I mean, uh, the sooner I get in there, the better. I mean, I feel like I'm in a great space right now as far as uh, uh, balancing uh, personal life, professional life, and that kind of thing. Um, right now, I feel like I'm in a great place to continue moving forward and uh, uh, making this a year to really make a run. What are some of the fights and names that you think would make sense in the next couple of fights? Um, so right now, a lot of the guys in the welterweight division are tied up. I mean, you have uh, a huge uh, welterweight card taking place in like Atlantic City next month. You have MVP versus uh, uh, Holland coming up next month or in March. Uh, you have Gilbert Burns going against... Uh, um, Jack Telemetalina. His name. Yeah. Uh, so you have all these fights that are coming up. So I kind of have to kind of sit back and uh, watch how some of these fights play out, so to speak, and see what's available. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, I've been a guy to uh, take advantage of short nose opportunities. And right now that I have my life in order, I'm definitely in the gym, just making sure I'm prioritizing uh, different skill sets. Like tonight, uh, oh, I'm sorry, tonight was uh, definitely an opportunity for me to gather some data as far as like uh, what I need to work on, where I need to improve. And uh, come Monday, we're doing just that. Is it difficult for Neil Magny to sit back and relax watching? Fights. Oh, 100%. Like, this is the most difficult thing ever, especially if I have some coffee. I mean, I, mean uh, I just love it. I mean, I love this sport. I mean, there'll be a day where I can learn how to compete in this sport. So uh, as I'm young and healthy, I want to get in as, as much as possible.
Neil, how different was this camp compared to the camp for Ian Gary? I know there was a short notice fight, but you had spoke about how you had a lot of things to deal with outside the cage. Uh, how much better were things going into this fight? Oh man, this fight, it was great. I mean, the way that things came together where um, I was able to actually prioritize my time in the gym and focus my time in the gym and actually beat her uh, to train. I mean, going into Ian Gary fight uh, and even the, the fights prior, like I'm sitting there trying to figure things out, like where um, I would get to the gym, I'll be there trying to train. And meanwhile, I'm thinking of, uh, of the thousand other things I have to do outside of the gym. So though I was uh, pre physically in the gym, uh, mentally, I just wasn't present the, the last couple of fights. So there's so much going on in my life that like um, I couldn't really focus what I needed to in the gym. But uh, I feel like I'm finding a good spot where things are starting to settle um, and I can continue moving forward and keep climbing. No babysitters, uh, babysitters quitting on you on the way to the gym. Yeah. I remember you mentioned that last time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just that's literally just life and the way it goes. I mean, I'm very fortunate to have the uh, group of people around me that I do. I mean, uh, nothing like rocking your baby to sleep before resting practice and getting it done. I mean, uh, like literally when I said all hands were on deck for preparation this fight, it was literally just that. I mean, uh, getting my kids to cooperate to go to bed on, at a decent time so we can all rest and uh, wake up, getting ready for school and be out the door for training on time. It was it was literally a, an all hands on deck type thing, be trying to balance uh, uh uh, single dad life and professional life and everything else. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I'm, I'm happy to see that it's finally coming together and is going well. And uh, I look forward to keep moving forward. And with that win, uh, you've climbed up again on the all-time wins list for the UFC. Uh, you know, it's interesting, like remembering how long ago you've been uh, in, in the promotion. Like, is that something you can kind of reflect on? I, I know you've never like fought for a title, but that's got to feel good in your career being uh, with some of the other names that are up there for the all-time wins. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even with this week talking to Rod Kell about it, she was like, hey, how long have you been in UFC for? And I was like sitting there doing the math, like, oh yeah, I've been fighting UFC banner since 2012 now. I mean, uh, literally a third of my life has been spent <laughs> under the UFC banner when I think back on it. I mean, uh, uh, that's uh, a huge pleasure, a huge honor, and I'm very grateful to do it all. I mean, especially uh, as being a place where um, physically, mentally, I feel like I'm still all there, so to speak. So uh, it's been a number of fights that I've been through, being able to travel around and fight the guys that I fought and still be uh, present, not just physically, but like mentally as well. Like still being able to uh, like have complete sentences and everything else yeah. like that. I'm like, man, that's, uh, that's a lot. So I'm um, definitely fortunate for it all and I appreciate it all. I know it's like close to like 1 a.m. here in Toronto. I, what are your plans? Like the kind of, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the victory a little bit here, whether it's here or back in uh, Colorado. Oh, we're about to celebrate. My son turns four to four years old tomorrow. I'm flying home to celebrate right now. I mean, uh, uh, literally I'm getting off the plane and racing home to go pick him up. Uh, uh, celebrate his birthday. Last year I was uh, in Brazil on his birthday and got to miss it. This year, daddy's coming home. We're about to celebrate. What time's your flight tomorrow? Uh, I think of five, 6 a.m. So oh, wow, so you're just leaving here and going right to the... I airport. literally packed my bags before coming to the arena tonight. <laughs> I, I, I'm literally a man on a mission this week. I knew I was going to come here, fight, and then uh, get home to my son as soon as possible. Trying to win that Father of the Year award or what? <laughs> and I'm going for it. Yeah. Uh, that's, for me, that's the most important title in the world right now. So uh, the fact that I was able to go out and get the job done tonight and go home and be super dad, I uh, can't wait for it. <laughs> Neil, can I get one? This, this is unrelated to your fight, but you might be in a unique situation that you would probably have a better answer than most. There's been this debate over what makes a UFC Hall of Famer, and it's kind of really come down like Daniel Cormier doesn't think that Jim Miller is necessarily a Hall of Famer. He never won the title, but he has the most wins. You're in a lot of these record books, but you you know, you know never achieved the title. So I'm curious, like, what makes what do you think makes a UFC Hall of Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that if I if I sit back long enough and argue about it, like, uh, who's legacy, who's this, who's that, um, sure, like, there'll be some guys that are going to... Uh, um, discredit certain things, um, like, well, you never won a championship, or this happened, or this happened. I mean, at this point, I still haven't won a championship yet, could be said, um, but um, like, when guys like Jim Miller were saying this, maybe his last fight, and uh, uh, some guys arguing that he may not deserve his chance in the uh, uh, Hall of Fame, I mean, if he gets it, great. If not, great. Uh, this is my life. I'm this fortunate for um, all the things that this sport has allowed me to done. I mean, the, the number of lives I was able to affect and touch over the last 12 years through the sport of mixed martial arts, um, that's something no one else can ever take away from me. So whether um, I get recognition for the work that I put into uh, being a Hall of Fame, great. But if not, um, I know the, the lives and the people this sport allowed me to touch and that I'm forever grateful for. So if I get the Hall of Fame jacket, woohoo! If not, uh, I'm fortunate to be able to help as many people as possible along my journey. Cool. Awesome. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.